In this video, I'll create an awesome typography animation. Hope you like the video. Enjoy. Here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. I'm going to name it Render 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. Click OK. Then go ahead and grab your type tool and type out your text. I'm going to type Creative, all in capitals. Make sure to align the text in the middle. Then hold the Control key and double click the Pan Behind tool right here to center the anchor point. Now switch back to the selection tool and expand the properties of the text, then click on the animate button and add opacity, then click on the add button, property and add tracking. After that, bring the opacity all the way to zero and set a tracking amount to 60 Then open the rate selector one. Make sure you are at the beginning of your composition, create a keyframe for start at 0%, go one second forward and set the value to 100%. Then select both keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you can press F9 as a shortcut. Then go ahead and open the graph editor here, select this point and drag the handle to the left. Let's do a quick preview. And that's what we have at the moment. So let's get the text scaling animation. Go to one second mark, we already have a keyframe there. Press S to bring up the scale properties and create a keyframe for scale. Set the value to 130%. Then Go and place your playhead at 15 frames and drag the keyframe to that. So exactly half a second. Then go one second forward from here. So one second, 15 frames and set the scale back to 100. Then select both keyframes, press F9 to apply the easy ease effect. Go to the graph editor and do the same thing. Drop the handle and pull it to the left. After quickly previewing the text, we can proceed to adding layers on top and on the bottom. So select your main text that says creative in my case and press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. And let's rename the duplicate to top one. So, and also change the color of it to a different one. So I'll choose green here. Then open the properties, go to text, select the animator one and press delete. We don't need the animator here. Also press U to bring up the scale properties and just remove the keyframe by Clicking on the stopwatch and make sure you are at 100% though. Let's actually pull the top one layer up a bit. Then go to the character tab and switch it to stroke by clicking on this arrow here. That will switch out the fill and bring out the stroke. You can adjust the stroke width here. I'll set mine to 4 pixels. You can say yours to whatever you want. You can further adjust the position of your top one text. Once you find the right position, keep it selected. Select the rectangle tool and create a mask like that. Just kind of cutting the bottom part of the text and press F to bring out the mask feather and set it to 30%. So as you can see now, the cut is not rough and it's actually smooth and you can further adjust it by selecting the mask or the layer and using your arrow keys. As you can see, I'm using the arrow keys to adjust the position of the layer and of the mask as well. That allows you to move pixel by pixel and be really precise. So use your arrow keys, then select the top one layer, press Ctrl D again, and create top one layer and pull it up a bit and you know, place it accordingly. And now press M to bring out the mask path, so select the mask here. And again, using your arrow keys, you can pull out the mask and adjust the position as you like. So once you find the right position, select the top two layer, press Ctrl D to create another duplicate. So pull it up and place it accordingly. Again, press M to bring out the mask path, select the mask one, and again, use your arrow keys and adjust the mask. That should look something like this. Once you're done creating and adjusting the top layers, let's continue with the bottom layers. So select the top one layer, press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. Let's rename this to bot one, so bot for bottom, give it a different color. So let's choose blue and place the bot one layer under the top one just to stay organized. Adjust the position of your bot one layer to place it under your main text like that. Press M to bring up the mask path. Select the mask one, drag on any point here and bring the mask down. So this time cover the top part of the text. And again, you can use your arrow keys to adjust the position of your layer or the mask. You can even zoom in this to be even more precise. And once you're done adjusting the bot one layer, select it, press Ctrl D to create a bot two layer and bring it under the bot one again, just to stay organized and bring the layer down a bit, adjust the position then press M 
to bring out the mask path. As, as always, select the mask, use the arrow keys to bring the mask down and adjust its position. And let's create a third and last bot three layer, bring it under the bot two, then adjust its position as you can see on your screen. Press M to bring out the mask path, select the mask and use the arrow keys to bring the mask down a bit. Once you're done adjusting all the layers, it should look something like this. And once you're happy with it, let's proceed to adding animation to all the layers. Let's move to the beginning of your composition and hide the main text, the right one that says creative. Let's add the first animation to top one layer, select it, expand the properties, click on the animate button and add position. The normal position will not work because we're working with masks and that's important. Make sure to select the position here. And add, click on the add button here and add tracking. Create a keyframe for position and play around with a Y value to drag it up until you no longer see the text. So it's completely covered. Just like that, then get one second forward, so to one second exactly, and set position Y value back to zero. Then go to 15 frames, so half a second, create a keyframe for tracking amount zero, then go one second fo forward from here, so one second, 15 frames, and set tracking amount to 30. Now select the keyframes, let's select the position keyframes first. Select them, press F9 to easily ease them, head over to the graph editor, drag the handle, and pull it to the left. Then select the tracking keyframes. Once again, press F9, go to the graph editor and create a peak in the middle. So drag the handles, both of them in the middle. Now let's do a preview. So that's a nice snappy animation. Now we can proceed to apply this animation to all the other layers. So select the animator one, press Control C to copy it. Make sure you are at the beginning of your composition. Select all the other layers, so top two, three, and all the bot layers. Select them all and press Ctrl V to paste the animation to all of them. Now let's adjust the position values of all the layers. Press U to see all the keyframes. Let's drag this up so we can get more space. We'll need to slightly adjust the position values though, not much. So for the top two, we can lower the Y value so it looks more in sync. And do the same for the top three, Look, you can lower it even further. So as you can see, it'll be something like 45. The bot layers will need a bit more adjusting because we need to change the direction that the layer is coming from. So for the bot two, go into the negative val values, so minus 120. For the bot two, you know, a bit less than that, A minus 81. And for the bot three, it should be even less, so minus 60 will do it. And by previewing, you can see the effect we're getting here. Now let's quickly adjust the tracking amount of all the layers. So for top one and bot one, the tracking will be 30. For top two, it'll be 60. Same for the bot two, 60. And for the top three and bot three, set the tracking amount to 90. That'll create kind of a staircase, if you will. Let's bring our main text back so we can see what's going on. So let's preview this. As you can see, the animation timing is a bit off. Now we need to adjust that. Let's go ahead and sync the layers popping up with the scaling down of our main text. So let's go to one second mark. Select all the top and bot layers and drag the layers start point to that one second mark. Let's do a quick preview. And as you can see, that's still way off. So let's move five frames back from here. So count back five frames and adjust the start point of top and bar layers. So that's a bit better, we can do it even slightly better. So let's move three frames back from here. One, two, three, and again adjust the timings. And that should look perfect in my opinion. And that's pretty much it, the main part of our animation is complete. Now let's proceed to creating the RGB effect. For this you'll need to select all the layers, Right click precompose. Let's name this animation once again to stay organized. Click OK. It will need to apply an effect called shift channels. Go to the effect and presets tab and here search for shift channels. Apply this to the animation layer. 
And here we need to change a couple settings. So take red from, leave it at red. Where it says take green from, bring the drop down setting to full off. And take blue from, full off. Now select the layer and press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. And from here set red to full off and take green from green. And once again Ctrl D to duplicate the layer. Set green to full off and take blue from blue. Now select all the layers and set the mode to screen. If you don't see the mode tabs, press F4 until you see that. Bring the drop down and select screen. As you can see our color is back to white. That's because we need to offset the layers by one frame. So let's zoom in on this and offset each layer by one frame. To so create a small staircase. Let's go ahead and preview what we have. And as you can see, we're having an RGB effect that looks really cool. And one final technique I want to share with you is a very useful one. So if you go back to the animation comp, you have all the layers here. And say you want to change the text of all of them at once. And you would have to do that for every single one separately. So in order to avoid that, there's one simple trick. So if you select all the bot and top layers like that and go to the search bar here and type source. That'll bring out the text source of all the selected layers and you'll find this little pick web here that you can drag and drop onto the main text. And that will make other text layers correspond with the main one that you choose. So let me just demonstrate that. So drag each pick web of every single layer, drop it to the main one, so the red creative in my case. To do that, that might take you some time, but trust me, it is worth it. So once you're done selecting the text, go ahead and change the main one to something that you like. So I'm typing hello now. As you can see, all the other layers have followed the suit and changed to hello. So that is really great and really handy if you want to create presets of this kind. And yeah, at this point, uh, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed the tutorial and see you in the next one.